Blender for Noobs. Hello, this is Dan Nobles and welcome to Blender for Noobs. In this video we're going to be looking at yet another way to create wireframes in Blender Cycles. Uh, I do have another video out there, but as I was trying to create wireframes for my car here, I realized that that method, one of the downfalls of that method is it doesn't get the uh, nice smooth wireframes that you would see with a subsurf model. Uh, it turned out very um, angular, I guess you would call it, and uh, just wasn't what I was looking for. So for this method, what we're going to do is we're going to be using textures in order to get the wireframes. Now it's not a new method to create wireframes using a texture. However, I've got a certain process that I've, I'm using to do this, and hopefully it'll be just about the easiest way you can do it. So let's get started. First thing you want to do is, with your model, just go ahead and save as something that you don't mind trashing later on, because you don't want to screw up your original model that you're working with. So once you got that done, what you're going to want to do is, if your model has all kinds of different parts like mine does, you want to get all these parts into one one single part so we can UV this entire model. So in order to do that, what I normally do is just, if you got a lot of parts, just do an A, select all. And I'm just going to deselect the uh, parts that don't pertain to the model itself. So once you got everything selected, just make sure that you shift click the very last thing here so that way you can come over here and do a control J. And that will bring this entire model over to this piece right here. Okay, so once you have all of that as one piece, then come over to your materials and you want to basically you can just get rid of all your materials here. So I'm just going to minus all of my materials that I created for this. So once you have all your materials uh, removed, go ahead and do a new material and we're just going to name this wireframe and we'll leave it as it is for right now. So then we want to create a UV map of this model. So just come over to a window and choose UV image editor. Tab into edit mode on your model. And right now as you can see it's pretty uh, convoluted there. So I'm just going to do an A select all and choose U to unwrap the model, but do a smart UV project. And I have an angle limit of 66. I think that's the default, and that seems to work pretty good. So I'm just going to click OK. Now for this size model, it's going to crunch away for a few minutes, so I'm not going to put you through that weight. So when it's done, you'll have this, uh, especially if it's a complex model like this, you'll have just a ton of UVs here, but they'll all be separated out just nice and neat like we need it to be. And then what you want to do is go to UVs and do your export UV layout. It'll bring it to this screen where we want to just name it something different. So I've already got wireframe here, so I'm going to use that. But you want to make sure that all UVs are selected. And for the size of it, I'm rendering out this one at 1200 by 1200. So I really want something higher than what the default 1024 by 1024 is. So I'm going to bump this way up. I'm going to make it 4096 by 4096. And the reason I'm doing that is because that will give me nice crisp lines on the render. And I'm going to leave the field capacity at 0.25, which is the default, and just export the UV layout. Once it's exported, what you need to do is bring it into your favorite graphics editing program which could be, you know, GIMP or Photoshop or whatever you use. So I'm going to bring up Photoshop and just do an open, find my UV, open it up. And all you need to do with this is just save it as a JPEG. I'm not going to use the PNG because I found out that the PNG tends to make it a little bit darker for whatever reason. So I'm just going to do save as JPEG and just save it. Okay, so that's all you need to do in the graphics program. 
Then you want to come back into the Blender, and I'm going to tab into Object Mode here. And we need our material to reflect that texture that we just created. So we're going to go into the Node Editor, and let me uh, go full screen here so we can see what we're doing. And we're going to add a few nodes. I'm going to do a Shift A and add uh, input texture coordinate. Let's move this over here. Do a Shift A and create a uh, image texture. So let's move that over here. Shift A and I'm going to create a another diffuse shader. Let's move that over there. Take the existing one, move it over here. So we're going to go from the UV into the vector here. We're going to open our UV image texture, which is what I called wireframe here, but I want the JPEG. I'm going to open that one up. And color, I'm going to go into the color here. And we need a mix shader. So just add a mix shader there. And actually, did that kind of wrong. I want to move these down. And let's bring the color into the factor of the mix shader. Let's move that one over here and put both of these into the shader here. And that's your setup. Now you want to change this to whatever your line color will be. So I just like to leave my lines black, so I'm going to leave it black and then change this one to whatever the background of your material is going to be. And I usually just kind of go to an off-white color to get kind of a clay look if I can. So this is the setup for your material. So we're going to go back and you should see your image showing up at least faintly because it's a huge image onto the texture here. So at that point uh, you need to set up your lighting. What I would suggest to do is get rid of any lighting that you might already have. I have a sun here, but I don't have any strength on it, so it's not really doing anything. But go over to your world settings and turn on ambient occlusion. And just give it like um, 0.40, and that should do it. And that's just to give you a good lighting to uh, do what you need to do there. Another thing that I do and this is completely optional, is, let me hide my light panels here. I use this backdrop here. Just going to resize it there a little bit. In this backdrop, if we look at the texture of that, all it is is using a velvet material. So. You would just choose, come down here and choose velvet, and then you can make it whatever background color you want. The other thing that you may want to look at is if you choose your object and go into your modifiers, look at the subsurf. If you have subdivide UVs on, you may want to turn that off. I found out that sometimes you'll get some bad results if that's on. So I'm just going to turn that off. And then we're going to do a render. So once it's rendered out, you should have a fairly good wireframe of your model. And that is pretty much it. You can see that the wireframes are pretty much crisp and clear. And they're nice and curved the way that they go over the um, subsurface model. Like I said in the other method that I was using, it would just basically use the uh, existing polygon edges to go over so it was uh, very angular looking and, and didn't get the result that I was looking for. So I hope this helps you out. Please subscribe. See you in the next video.